Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bettina Ray. Here you'll find all things to do with yoga for fertility, pregnancy, birth and surviving early motherhood. So what I want to talk to you about today is SI pain or unstable pelvis and what you can kind of do to prevent this sort of pain. Now I've done a couple of videos on this before. I experienced SI pain during my second pregnancy with my second son. And at around 20 weeks, I found that I really had to be careful in my yoga practice to the point that I gave up a lot of my physical practice um, at that point in that pregnancy. And it was really quite severe right up until the end that I was wearing the SI belt that you can get from a physio and I really had to be careful with what I did physically because I was in a lot of pain. If you've ever had this sort of pain, it's, it's horrific. It affects everything you do because you can't it's almost like you can't move. You can't lie down, that can be uncomfortable. You can't roll over, that can be uncomfortable. You can't move about in the same way that you used to and it's really quite restrictive to your movement. So what I wanna share with you today is more than just alignment stuff. So if you're interested in alignment and how in a yoga practice you need to be careful with alignment and in your day-to-day -day life you need to be careful with alignment, I'll link the other video below, go and check that one out. But other than that, what I wanna to do today is just show you a couple of things that can really help and I've been finding have really helped both before this pregnancy and during this pregnancy to improve the SI pain and to kind of reduce it. Because I think I've been doing pretty well. I'm 21 weeks now and I've only had a few mild cases of it. Whereas this time last pregnancy, I was pretty much not moving and really just relying on that belt. The two things that I really recommend is number one is strengthening the inner thighs and supporting the pelvis. So the muscles that run up the inner thighs are wrapping around your pelvis. And if you can strengthen those so that you've got strong inner thighs and strong glutes, it really helps to keep that pelvis in alignment. And the other thing is stretching the psoas. And the psoas is the muscle that runs along the front of the hips. And if you have a tight psoas, I find it really affects how my hips feel and how my pelvis feels. So if you can stretch that out and make sure you're strong where you need to be and you're open where you need to be, then you're gonna really reduce that hip pain. Obviously also not overstretching in an opening way. So now that I'm starting to get a little bit of that SI pain back, I can feel it. I'm really careful, I don't need to open at all. So if you are hyperflexible, you're probably gonna be more likely to get this pain during pregnancy, unfortunately. So I'm not doing any opening poses anymore. Um, I'm really, no, no hip openers, no pigeon, nothing like that. It's all about strengthening glutes, inner thighs, and stretching that psoas. So a few things to show you. If you've got a block, this is excellent. If you don't have a block, a few books under your hips are gonna help. So if you just come to lie down, so remembering to support the body as you come down because you don't want any stress on that belly. And you're just gonna bring the block in between the knees. So the feet are in at hip distance so that you can touch the back of the heels. And I just want you to notice the low back to start. So you can kind of press that low back into the floor and start to engage the muscles around the pelvis. So if you've got really severe pain, this might be all that you do, just a really gentle rock. And obviously you're not doing any of this strengthening stuff while you've got a big flare up of that pain. I would just let it rest, use your belt as much as you need, use the supports that you can around the pelvis, wait till you're feeling a little bit better and then you can work at the strengthening. Or better still, do it before you fall pregnant. So from here, all you wanna do is press into the feet, slowly lift the hips up. So you're engaging through the bottom and you'll notice having to press into that block, the inner thighs are engaging. And then just really slowly rolling down again. So working with the breath, inhaling to rise and exhaling to lower. So I would do this until you're starting to feel really tired in those muscles. So for me, probably about 15 to 20 now that I'm up to. And you can work at holding at the top, but making sure that you keep engaging through those muscles that you really want to target. So you could do a couple of sets. So doing a few rounds, so doing 10 until you're feeling tired, 
stopping, having a little break, and then coming back and doing a couple more sets of that. So two more rounds of 10. The other thing that you want to do is stretch out the psoas. So that's strengthening through the glutes and the inner thighs. Stretching out the psoas, bringing the block underneath the hips, and I'm really liking the lowest setting at the moment. I used to like more opening through the back, but once you're pregnant, you're already doing a lot of that. So the important thing is here is to press that back into the block. So the important thing is to press the back into the block. So you really want to tilt the pelvis back towards you slightly and then let one leg rest down. You shouldn't feel any pain through that back. If you do, it's not the right time to do this stretch. You could also do this on the bed. You could lay on the side of the bed and just let one leg gently hang off. I also keep my inner thighs engaged. So as much as I'm stretching through here, I'm still supporting the pelvis with the other muscles. My pelvic floor is engaged, which is really important when it comes to stretching that pelvis. My baby is going crazy at the minute. <laughs> you can feel him wriggling around. So then once you've done one side, just releasing, taking the other leg out and stretching into the opposite side. So just stretching through this muscle at the front of the leg and the hip. Obviously, if you're not pregnant and you're maybe preparing for another pregnancy and trying to get this right before you go into it, I would suggest you could stretch a little bit more so you could come up onto a higher side. But if you're already pregnant, we're really cautious with overstretching, so I'd just stay on the low side of the block. And then when you feel you've had enough, pressing the feet in, bringing the hips back down. I'd just hug the knees in, obviously wide knees so you've got space for the belly just to kind of let that back reset. And then when you're ready, coming back up to have a seat. So other things that can be really helpful and I've found really helpful in this pregnancy is walking. Um, walking's gonna help keep everything kind of in alignment, especially if you keep focus when you're walking on engaging the glutes. I know for me, my glutes get lazy. <laughs> I have a lazy bum. So when I walk, I'm actually thinking about engaging those muscles and that's really been helping. It's a little gentle drawing down, a little hugging in here, pelvic floor engagement whilst walking. So quite mindful walking is really helping to lessen that pain that I felt in previous pregnancies. And the last thing that can I tell you is to get yourself a really supportive pair of pants. So I also have the SI belt. I don't have it on me at the moment. So in those really bad flare-ups, the SI belt is great. It's gonna hold your pelvis together. I'm loving these Caden Shea pants at the moment. Not sponsored at all, but they come all the way up. It's not great for filming because I have a battery pack on my speaker at the minute, but they come so high. And even when you have them rolled down, this is quite a tight band and it's really supportive of the pelvis. So having a look into some specific pregnancy yoga tights, that are gonna give you that support around the belly can also be really helpful. So I hope this has helped you. If you have any other questions about SI pain and what you can do to manage it, it really is one of those things that you've gotta just work with until you have your baby. In most cases, by the time bub arrives and you've gone through that recovery of strengthening pelvic floor and core again, you will find that that pain has eased. In other cases, you might need to do more of that strengthening and stretching and being really careful of not overstretching and over opening to make sure that your body can come back with the support it needs around the pelvis after pregnancy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, make sure that you have subscribed and I'll see you next time. Namaste.